In a steam engine, the firebox is the area where the fuel is burned, producing heat to boil the water in the boiler. Most are somewhat box-shaped, hence the name. The hot gases generated in the firebox are pulled through a rack of tubes running through the boiler. Topic: <laughs> Steam locomotive fire tube firebox. In the standard steam locomotive fire tube type boiler, the firebox is surrounded by water space on five sides. The bottom of the firebox is open to atmospheric pressure, but covered by fire grates solid fuel or a firing pan liquid fuel. If the engine burns solid fuel, like wood or coal, there is a grate covering most of the bottom of the firebox to hold the fire. An ash pan, mounted underneath the firebox and below the grates, catches and collects hot embers, ashes, and other solid combustion waste as it falls through the grates. In a coal-burning locomotive, the grates may be shaken to clean dead ash from the bottom of the fire. They are shaken either manually or in larger locomotives by a powered grate shaker. Wood-burning locomotives have fixed grates that can't be shaken. Wood ash is generally powder which will fall through the grates with no more agitation required than the vibrations of the locomotive rolling down the track. The fire grates must be replaced periodically due to the extreme heat they must endure. Combustion air enters through the bottom of the firebox and airflow is usually controlled by damper doors above the ash collection pocket of the ash pan. A locomotive that burns liquid fuel, usually Bunker C. Fuel oil or similar heavy oil, does not have grates. Instead, they have a heavy metal gauge firing pan bolted tight against the bottom of the firebox. The firing pan is covered with firebrick and the firebox has a firebrick lining, usually up to the level of the firebox door, all the way around the firebox. The oil burner is a nozzle containing a slot for the oil to flow out onto a steam jet which atomizes the oil into a fine mist which ignites in the firebox. The oil burner nozzle is usually mounted in the front of the firebox, protected by a hood of firebrick, and aimed at the firebrick wall below the firebox door. Dampers control air flow to the oil fire. Topic. Brick arch There is a large brick arch made from fire brick attached to the front wall of the firebox immediately beneath the fire tubes. This extends backwards over the front third to half of the firebed. It is supported on arch tubes, thermic siphons, or circulators. The brick arch directs heat, flames, and smoke back over the fire towards the rear of the firebox. Visible smoke contains unburned combustible carbon particles and combustible gases. The purpose of this redirection is to cause more complete combustion of these particles and gases which make the locomotive more efficient and causes less visible smoke to be emitted from the stack. Without the arch, flames and visible smoke would be sucked straight into the fire tubes without having been fully burned, causing visible smoke to be emitted at the stack. The brick arch and its supports, arch tubes, thermic siphons, and circulators require periodic replacement due to the extreme heat they endure. Topic: <laughs> Fire tubes. Fire tubes are attached to one wall of the firebox, the front wall for a longitudinal boiler, the top for a vertical boiler, and carry the hot gaseous products of combustion through the boiler water, heating it, before they escape to the atmosphere. Fire tubes serve the additional purpose of staying the flat tube flue sheets front and rear so that only the top of the front flue sheet and the bottom of the rear flue sheet must be separately braced. Topic. Sheets and stays The metal walls of the firebox are normally called sheets, which are separated and supported by stays. 
The stays support and brace the sheets plates against pressure. Ideally, they should be located at right angles to the sheets, but since the outer sheet, wrapper sheet is often rounded and the top of the firebox crown sheet is relatively flat by comparison, such a relationship to both sheets is impossible. The actual location of the stays is a compromise. Since stay breakage is hidden, the stays have longitudinal holes, called tell-tails, drilled in them which will blow water and steam, revealing if they are broken. A boiler with more than five broken stays, or two next to each other, must be taken out of service and the stays replaced. The fusible plugs, usually located in the highest part of the crown sheet, have a soft metal alloy core which melts out if the water level in the boiler gets too low. Steam and water blowing into the firebox both alerts the locomotive crew to the low water condition and helps put out the fire. Not all locomotives are equipped with fusible plugs. Also, fusible plugs should be replaced at regular intervals, about every three months for a locomotive in regular service, because the soft metal alloy core will slowly melt out over time even if the boiler water is carried at proper levels. The mud holes or washout plugs allow access to the interior of the boiler for washing and scraping away boiler mud and scale. The sheets on the left and right are called side sheets, while the sheet in the front of the firebox is the flue sheet. The front flue sheet is in the front of the boiler and at the rear of the smoke box. The rear sheet is at the back of the firebox and has the door opening in it. The crown sheet is the top of the firebox. The crown sheet must be covered by water at all times. If the water level drops below the crown sheet, it will become overheated and start to melt and deform, usually sagging between the crown stays. If the condition continues, the crown sheet will eventually be forced off the crown stays by the pressure in the boiler, resulting in a boiler explosion. This condition, usually caused by human error or inattention, is the single greatest cause of a locomotive boiler explosion. Topic. Bell pair firebox Normally the top of the boiler wrapper sheet over the firebox is radial to match the contour of the boiler, however, due to the problem of placing stays at right angles to both the wrapper sheet and the crown sheet see above, the bell pair firebox was developed. In the bell pair design, the wrapper sheet is roughly parallel with the firebox sheets to allow better placement of the stays. This arrangement gives the firebox end of the boiler a more square shape and is usually made as large as possible within the loading gauge, to offer the greatest heating surface where the fire is hottest. The most notable user of the bell pair firebox in the United States was the Pennsylvania Railroad. Other railroads, such as the Great Northern and Illinois Central, had locomotives with bell pair fireboxes. Illinois Central 4 6 no. 382, Casey Jones engine, had a bell pair firebox. <laughs> <laughs> Wooten firebox The Wooten firebox was very tall and wide to allow combustion of anthracite coal waste. Its size necessitated unusual placement of the crew, examples being camelback locomotives. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Combustion chamber. Some fireboxes were equipped with a so-called combustion chamber which placed additional space between the fire and the rear flue sheet. This allowed more complete combustion and increased firebox surface area for greater heat transfer. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Fireman's duties. The fireman's role on a steam locomotive is to ensure the driver has an adequate supply of steam at his disposal at all times. 
This is achieved by maintaining a supply of fuel to the fire, and by maintaining the boiler water level so that it covers the firebox crown sheet at all times, otherwise, the latter will overheat and weaken, and a boiler explosion may result. At the terminal after the day's work is done, the fireman will fill the boiler with water and either bank or dump the fire i.e. extinguish the fire, according to company policy, and chock the driver wheels to prevent the locomotive from moving while it is unattended. <laughs> Gallery Topic: Road locomotive firebox. Road locomotives, such as traction engines, usually had fireboxes similar to those on railway locomotives, but there were exceptions, e.g., the Sentinel steam wagon, which had a vertical water tube boiler. Topic: Stationary boiler firebox. There were, and are, many different designs of firebox for stationary boilers. In flue-type boilers e.g. the Lancashire boiler, the flues themselves form the firebox. In water tube boilers, the firebox is usually a firebrick-lined compartment below the water tubes. <laughs> Marine boiler firebox In marine boilers there are also various types of firebox. The main distinction is, again, between fire tube types e.g. the scotch boiler, with internal firebox, and water tube types e.g. the yarrow boiler, with external firebox. See also Fire tube boiler Flue Fusible plug